Hello, it's this one verse doing another review today. Today I'm reviewing Stone and Steel by Ebony J. Dunbar. I received an advanced reader's copy of this book in exchange for a fair and honest review. Thank you to Neon and Hemlock Press for reaching out. All opinions are my own. So this is a fantasy about General Olea, who has recently overthrown the king of her country and installed her sister Odessa, a stone mage, on the throne in his place. The former king was cruel and many people lived in poverty, and Olea believed that Odessa could be a more just and honorable ruler, and she leaves on another campaign, and when she returns, she finds that things aren't as good good as she'd hoped they would be. And it sort of spawns some questions about power and corruption and family bonds. In terms of the characters, Aaliyah is very honest and honor bound. She's very optimistic and she tends to believe the best about people. And I thought this story is very honest in showing how she gets both the good and the bad of that. I won't tell you too much about Odessa. I feel like it's better if she's sort of a mystery and you learn about her for yourself. Aaliyah and Odessa are kind of estranged from their parents and you sort of find out why Aaliyah has to grapple with why her parents aren't around. And I think her ability to believe the best about people and sees her through that. But when you find out like why her parents aren't in the picture anymore, it is a very bittersweet thing. There is another character, uh, Mercedes. Mercedes, uh, who goes by Mercy for short, lives in the slums of the city and runs a few of the gangs. She is a bone mage, so she has the ability to control people's bodies. And her and Aaliyah have a long and fraught history. So this was a fun read. It felt like the second Aaliyah set foot back in her home kingdom, we're getting things revealed. And the first big twist, my jaw was on the floor. I was shocked. It was a good twist. It was something that really complicated my understanding of Aaliyah's character. And I felt like it leaned into sort of historical narratives of royalty and political intrigue. Another thing that I enjoyed about the story is that it is very queer. Leah dates women and her romances are very important to the story and we see a bit of her dating history. I think the vast majority of the characters are queer. There are characters in same gender relationships or have been in same gender relationships. There are characters who are trans. There are characters who are non-binary. And it's just an accepted part of life. It's not really a big to-do in the kingdom. It's just casually mentioned when describing who's in a crowd or just what the characters are up to. There might have been a few straight characters in there, but, you know, nothing was confirmed. So who knows? And another thing I liked about the story was uh, queer people having families. And it was nice to see a story where it was just acknowledged that, like, queer people have kids too and also that like sexuality isn't static there's a character in here who's under either their understanding of their sexuality changes or their bi or pan and i just enjoyed the way that was introduced it was just done so casually and it was refreshing so there's several different kingdoms in this world and they sort of each have a different cultural base i think there's one that's sort of based on europe there's one that's sort of based on the middle east and then there's the one that Aaliyah is from, which is based very much on African-American culture from what I could tell. Like, Aaliyah greets someone by dapping. I feel like just a lot of life in the United States is taking African-American culture for granted. African-American culture is kind of derided and treated as if it's like not distinct, as if it doesn't have a history. And it's treated as something that anyone can just kind of take a piece of and do with it what they want. And I just enjoyed this novella was so tender with it and so appreciative of it. Because why can't African American culture be valued? Why can't it be epic? Why can't it be mystical? The world kind of gave me Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kaya Shanti Wilson. That is another epic fantasy that uses African-American culture in interesting ways in terms of speech. And while Dunbar's writing is nowhere near as dense as Ashanti Wilson's, it just seemed like a very obvious parallel to me. This is a book that has elemental magic and 
That was interesting. I think the metals are fire, water, air, stone, steel, and bone. I really like elemental magic, but I felt like Dunbar relied a little bit on the fact that readers would know what elemental magic was and kind of didn't explain a whole lot about what it means in her universe. I would have liked a little bit more explanation, like, you know, what are the limits and costs of using magic? For me, it would have helped in the battle scenes, especially at the big climax, for me to have a better understanding of the stakes. There's like two fight scenes that use it, and Aaliyah doesn't have magic, so it's something that's kind of happening and the world around her. It's not something that is super central to her identity or to her activities. And I think I enjoyed the bone matches the most because there's just something powerful and disturbing about someone having such an intimate control over your body and having a power that can so easily lead to scenes with like gore and bloodshed. And I felt like that was most outside of the scope of what I had previously seen in terms of elemental magic. So I thought that was the coolest and that was the one I think I enjoyed the most. So on the whole, I enjoyed this story. I thought the characters were compelling and I really enjoyed the relationships between the characters. I would definitely recommend this novella. Is this a novella that you're looking forward to reading? Do you read a lot of novellas? If you could take anything from your culture and put it in a fantasy book, what would you put in there? Just for discussion's sake. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to stay up to date with me and my bookish activities, please subscribe. Have a good one. Stay safe. Goodbye.